Well, I'm here at Shorncliffe at the hills just above Folkestone, and this is a military site, it's an army camp, and it's been one since 1794 when the Kent Yeomanry were founded. And the reason for the camp being here, up on the hills, good views out over the English Channel, and this whole place was built to stop an invasion. That was the Napoleonic invasion. And you will find on this coast Martello Towers, even a Royal Military Canal that was dug. Such was the fear that Napoleon would invade the country. Today, it is the home to the 1st Battalion, the Royal Gurkha Rifles. It is still an active army camp, although, given the size of the army now, parts of it are actually being sold off and being developed for housing. But one of the barracks here, the Napier Barracks, well, that is currently undergoing a big refit because later on this week, it won't be the Ministry of Defence that owns the Napier Barracks here at Shorncliffe. It'll be the Home Office. And that's because they're going to house 400 illegal migrants on this site. And this has been done without reference to the Parish Council, without reference to the District Council, without reference to the local MP, Damien Collins. Everybody is furious that this is being imposed upon them by central government. But if you think about it, the sheer number of people who are illegally in this country and still coming in every day gives the government a few options. I've been around the country, I've been to hotels, we've looked at private accommodation. Well now, it's army camps that are being used. This one here in Shorncliffe, one Pengali in Tenby in West Wales is right now being refitted to be used for the same purpose. And there's something wrong about this. I mean, firstly, that this place was built to prevent invasion and now it will, it will actually house people who are part of a modern invasion, but it's more than that. We have a very large number of people, people who've served in Afghanistan, served in Iraq, who've fallen upon very hard times. Hard times not just financially, but mentally as well. Far too many of them are homeless. And I think the idea that barracks like this, which actually could be used to house ex-servicemen, are being used to house people who've come to Britain illegally is something that makes people pretty upset. I'm also told that here in the local community people are not happy about this decision at all. So this is it. This is Shorncliffe, Ministry of Defence keep clear and you see there the sign for the 1st Battalion, the Royal Gurkha Rifles. So this is it, Napier Barracks. We can just about see it through there. I wonder whether it's a Serco job. Defence Infrastructure Organisations. Here we are, this is Napier, part of the Shorncliffe camp. We see a few people milling around. Sometime this week or next week, about 400 people will arrive here. How, how permanent or temporary it's going to be, no one knows. But as I say, done with no consultation with any local elected officer at all. The no consultation point is quite powerful, I think. Totally. I mean, literally Thursday. Just yeah, I know, I know Damien Collins. I mean, this is not to do with party. It just generally there's been parish, yeah. district, yeah. Yeah, MP. Generally. They're running out of room to put people. That's the problem. We've got, I think it's about 50,000 people. The group of people there, it's the local councillor, other local councillors, representatives from Folkestone and Hyde District Council. Uh, they've given me a bit more information. Monday, Monday is the day that people are going to start arriving. It's up to 400, but they've got no idea uh, whether it'll all be on one day. No idea uh, exactly who it's going to be. They know it's people uh, who would have registered asylum claims, having come illegally into the country. Uh, I think they're rather hoping it might be a group of families, but I'll bet you it's 400 young men. But I, mean, I don't know how many, how many acres this site is, but oh, it's, well, yes, it's it. It's must be hundreds. Yeah, hundreds, hundreds yeah. as well. We've spoken to the local councillor, we've spoken to the local council officials, and you could see in that conversation quite some consternation. Um, you know, the fact the local councillor's a Lib Dem, he still spoke to me, um, there is consternation about this. John, you're a local man. Uh, this sort of came as a bolt from the blue almost, did it? Did, it did, it uh, did. I just happened to see on the website yesterday from the local news about it, and uh, I simply couldn't believe it. I thought it was nonsensical. Uh, it's the right idea, you know, uh, rather than putting me in a four or five star hotel. Well, this is the point, isn't it? Because I think, you know, what I've been doing, going around the country, showing, you know, people in hotel rooms with big flat screen TVs and all the rest of it. So this is a cheaper alternative. But from what I understand, it's going to be open yeah. in, a, in a sense that anybody that's housed here is free to 
you know, walk down the hill to Sandgate or do whatever they want to do. So, I don't know. I mean, have you spoken to many people about it? Uh, no, no, because as it's, said, it's we, we so new. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, as I said, I, I spoke to my, some of my relatives about it, and they all said, "No, I'm sure they can't be doing that. It doesn't seem to make sense." But the one thing that kind of gets to me a bit is we've got so many ex-servicemen. You know, guys that served in Iraq, Afghanistan, physically damaged, mentally, in many cases, damaged. Uh, I said, something says to me, well, maybe if we got these empty army buildings, we could be looking after them. Up and down the country, the MOD been selling off land for housing. If you walked around here, you saw the new development yeah. that's happening yeah, yeah, yeah. down the road from yeah. you. Uh, so these places aren't now any, in isolation. Yeah. And that's the point. They're surrounded by housing. I think the problem for local residents will be groups of young men walking around town, and that's going to be the issue. I guess it's pretty much a fait accompli. Yes, yes, yes. And as, as usual, the government hasn't thought this through. No. You know, they, they thought, oh, this is a handy barracks, this is next door to uh, where all this, they're turning up. But it's, it's not any longer in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we have a lovely country park here. Yeah. But if you go 10 yards in the opposite direction, you wind up with housing. Yeah. And you have a, you have a primary school. Around. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what, we've teased out all the arguments here. <laughs> Just one last little thought on this from me. We've heard for years about the jungle, about the camps in Calais. Now we're going to have camps in Shawncliffe. That's how it seems to me.